All right, I'm back in the garage. And uh, this morning's project is going to be replacing or, or adding a new <clears throat> um, hour meter to the excavator. And I, I brought the excavator inside the garage to do this since the rainy season has started here. And just uh, for the background, this is the original um, data panel for the excavator. And it, it does have an hour meter, but from what I was told from the manufacturer that it, it wasn't hooked up yet, it's not working, or I don't really understand why, but it gives er uh, kind of a erroneous time um, like for right for now I've it's sitting at um, sitting at 1.6 hours if that is indeed the hours but um, you know when I got it it was at point two so I just interpreted Interpolated this, you know, the last several months of of each each uh, decimal point that it rolled over to come up with something like um, I'm just you know, I think it was 300 hours right now. I've got it written down, but uh, the point is that that's that only rolls over every two or three hours I think of of, of time. And I wanted something more accurate, and also that I could program. And so what I've come up with, I found a cat, um, cat branded digital hour meter here, and that's what I wanted. It, it's going to count in in the tenths of an hour, and it's pretty simple. We just have power and time on the reverse and what's also kind of cool about this it has a remote control where you can um, adjust the time which is you know this is what you need if if your machine has already hours on it you want to be able to set it to how many hours the machine has and or uh, if you rebuild it you want to be able to set it back to zero so you've got time since overhaul and I think it I think it has like several memories where you can you know time in service time since overhaul and took time so this, this is going to be interesting um, what I what I wanted to do initially was move Nina was mount this here maybe alongside the key here and I still might do that but this is kind of a concave slightly a rounded surface I mean convex a little bit and I'm not sure if I want to do that it's going to depend on the wiring but what I've been thinking is it would also be okay to put right here uh, to the flat panel I'm going to remove the panels and see what kind of wiring I have available and get to it. Alright, so we've got a, a hot lead I could use right off the ignition and that's going to be right here. I'm just going to pick up this wire and uh, 
as soon as you turn the key on, that's hot. So we we'll use that. And I think I kind of, after, after looking in there, I decided um, I'm not sure I want to put it on the side. And after taking off this panel a little bit here, I think I can, it's flat enough where it, it'll be easy to put it on right here. So it's just a matter of cutting this in a circle. And I'm going to look into that. I'd like to use my my uh, plasma cutter, but then again, I just might use a, whole, a metal hole saw and pop it out. We'll see. I'm going to use an easy splice and instead of the key I found uh, a hot wire on the control module. Okay, there's my hot wire and I figured I don't have any black wire so I'm going to use green and orange. I'll use green for the ground and orange for the time. I could pick up a ground on here, but it'd probably be easier if I just pick up a, a bolt hole to the chassis. I'm gonna pull this throttle, throttle cable mess out of here and make it better. to uh, shorten this bolt up. Possibly. Uh, we'll see. So it does look like, it looks like the bolt is bottoming out onto the cable before it before it pulls tight on the bracket. And then that's, that's why you got, got that. decided to use a metal cutting hole saw for the hour meter. I went and looked and I didn't have any metal cutting hole saw so that's always a good time to, to order it. So I ordered from Amazon, it took about a week and I'm going to cut this circle out to mount the hour meter. I did it. I 
not too bad of a job, but it's, this is the moment of truth. A little bit of the gauge, it has these little, let's see if you get better light here. The gauge has these little tabs, uh, circle tabs, one there and one on the other side. Indexing. So if I just trim one or both of those off, looks like it's going to be pretty good. That looks like it'll do it there. Just need to put my control box in back in here. And the throttle's fixed. Got my ground wire ready. It's just a matter of putting the nacelle the back on. Okay, I'm back on the excavator. So the first of all, the, the throttle, I uh, I welded the uh, the pinch bolt for the throttle cable to the handle so that's not going to wobble around anymore and then for the hour meter I found out I, I did cut the hole with the new hole saws and that worked out fine but then I found out when I replaced the the cover here that there was um, this this big rib here was interfering with the gauge so I printed uh, 3d printed a, an extension here the brown part and then epoxied that to the cover and then mounted the timer to that and while I was 3d printing I always wanted to make a cover for this so I made this cover here this is PLA plastic Works out pretty nice there. Now I put something in a shim in there so it snaps real, real nice, but it'll keep the sun off off of this. So the end result is whenever I have power on on the machine, my timer is functioning, and I use the remote. I used the remote control that came with the gauge to program in 50 hours. And, and that's that. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.